Welcome to On Air, Interviews with the Artist, a Georgia Tech Library special podcast where we do interviews and discussions with artists working with the Georgia Tech Library. In episode one, we talk with Ann Shira, who designed a piece called Tech TV with the Georgia Tech community in mind. From finding inspiration from her 100-year-old oak in her yard to working with native grasses as a master gardener, Anne talks about her creative process and the submission process for being an art mat artist. Through our discussion with her, we all learn you don't necessarily need formal training to be a creative and artistic person. Hi, Anne. Hiya. How you doing? Good, good. Good. Thank you so much for joining me sure. today. We're, we decided what we would do is, you know, we got the Artomat and we thought it might be kind of fun to have a little series where we featured different artists who participated in the project. And so I thought it would be really appropriate to, to talk to you since you did a, a piece specifically inspired by Georgia Tech. <laughs> How long have you guys had the Artomat? Um, we just got it in. So it's just been in about a year. And okay. I had heard about the project, thought it was really cool. And, you know, it took a, as with anything, it sort of, you know, ju- after jumping through some hoops, we... Uh, we finally got the logistics worked out and and got it uh, installed, but it's been really popular with the students. They really like it. So like how many, how many pieces do y'all go through? How many of you order? I'm so curious. I want to say, I was looking at the stats actually recently, and um, I want to say in the last year, we've sold about 400 pieces. Um, wow. So I don't know how that compares to other Ardo mats, but I, it, it's it's interesting. We'll have like sort of lulls where nothing sells, but then what will happen is like a couple of weeks will come through and we'll have uh, just sort of a flurry of people wanting wanting to get stuff out the machine. Yeah, um, yeah my friend and I visited maybe December, maybe early January. And um, I think about a third of the products were sold out. I'm like, dang, that's the one I wanted. So oh. <laughs> it was kind of it was kind of fun to be the customer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you should definitely stop by, you know, any it's restocked now. So we have, including with your stuff. So I don't know if uh, <laughs> if you've been by, but um, and we did a little Instagram feature on your your TV. Um we're, like I said, we're going to be doing sort of this running series where we showcase somebody like maybe monthly or every few months. And, uh, and so we add, we put yours up there. Um, but I suspect they will go pretty quickly, especially, you know, with the added promotion. <laughs> right, right. I know I was trying to figure out, could I just haul some over there since I'm two miles away rather than sending them to North Carolina and then coming back? Uh, yeah <laughs> I guess they have like sort of a process they like to go through I guess up there right. um yeah right. is this your first piece with with Artomat or have you done other stuff? um yeah so I started with Artomat last summer um I heard about it through another art thing I'm doing which is I have a so I don't know if you've heard of the free little art gallery movement. Oh, I think I have. I've seen a couple of them and I've been actually interested in that. And I've been thinking about just putting one in my own yard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'd heard of the little, little libraries and we have lots mm-hmm. of those. I have a very walkable neighborhood. So mm-hmm. somehow I heard about uh, the free little art galleries during the pandemic. So uh, for my birthday, my husband put one up in the front yard and um it's been a lot of fun and I've kind of networked with other uh, woman in Florida has one in her yard and she also did Artomat. So that's kind of how I heard about it. So oh, that's really yeah, cool. So um, uh, when I started, I um, worked on two pieces. One was a little the little TVs. And then also I have a hundred year old oak tree in my backyard. So I wanted to do something with the acorn. So I also have, uh, I have a native plant garden, I'm a master gardener, so I had some native um, grasses, so I kind of did a little miniature, um, like kind of like a bird's nest and 
collected some acorn type sculptures in the little nests and uh, got those approved as well. But those were a real pain in the butt to make. So <laughs> I really like them. But, but um, uh, I think that's something I've learned about um, the art is, yeah, it looks nice, but what's the process? What are the materials? How is it going to hold up, you know, slopping down an old cigarette machine? Um, mm. How much time does each piece take to make? So that's been a real learning curve. And I want to go back and try the nests again, but I got to rethink the process on that. That's so interesting. You're a, a master gardener. I may have to get some tips from you then at some point. I, I've been involved or I, I, I try to participate in, um, I guess, plant rescues with the, yeah, me too. With, with the Georgia Native Plant Society. Right, and right. That's been so much fun. And interestingly enough, those plants, I know we're going off on a tangent, but right, uh, right. those plants have done so well in my yard. I don't even, I just stick them in the ground and, and they grow. <laughs> Yeah, I started doing that during the pandemic too. Yeah, and it's it's been a lot of fun. They're just so far out mm -hmm. um, in the burbs. I live in town, Atlanta, but um, so, and that's another thing I've thought about is, again, tangent, is how to identify some inside the perimeter places, because I'm sure there's still some, you know, native plant areas that we mm -hmm. could kind of rescue before they get, get paved over. I know, so. I know. Yeah, I, I, I have some world sunflowers that I, I only had a few when I started and now it's like crazy. It's they've almost oh. borderline invasive, but they look really nice when they, um, right. bloom. Uh, but they need to come over and, and take some from you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I give them away all the time. Like, because <laughs> I just can't stop them from growing now. Right. right. Sort of, I know you touched on this a little bit, but tell me a little bit about yourself. Have you had any formal arts training or what got you interested in creative activities or working with your hands? Sure. So um, I've had a few art courses through my life, but uh, my profession as a, a policy analyst and a, a assistant commissioner with the Georgia Department of Labor. So my real um, career passion was public policy and workforce issues. Um, so that's where I spent most of my uh, professional life. I've uh, retired and um, have also done some work with a small nonprofit helping at-risk youth um, to get some internships and enter the work world. We've worked with the Federal Reserve Bank and um, lots of big corporations to help kids um, get a step up. So that, that's been enjoyable. Um, I took a few art classes in college. Um, I've always liked doing hands-on work. So uh, during my younger years, I did a lot of textile work, uh, murals, quilting, sewing, that kind of thing. Um, but I really, um, I think I really started um, enjoying the art world kind of through the free little art gallery and Artomat, I, I'm just so intrigued by the idea of art being picked up by strangers and making a selection and, um, you know, just having some connections all over the country or just people walking by my house. I, I love to pick out my curtains and watch people perusing the art in my front yard or kind of bringing something in out of a satchel. So I, I think that idea really intrigues me. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. And it's, it's um, I kind of like to think of it as almost like a Cracker Jack thing with the auto mat. You don't know what you're going to get. And it's kind of the same, same sort of principle, sort of people getting this little surprise, that, this unexpected surprise that okay. maybe makes them think about things in a different way. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think a lot of my uh, creative energy is was in through my master gardening and doing garden design, um, not professionally, but um, in my art and, you know, being a resource to others. I um, I do a um, garden club with a dementia unit. Um, so really helping them decide what they want to grow and how they want it to look and deciding what color of flowers are their favorites. And um, they really like um, the mints and the scented garden. So kind of um, the same kind of art principles is, is that how do you um, connect senses of people with good memories and 
um, you know, just bringing some enjoyment and a little part of life. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of overlap there. I think a lot of times just working with your hands, whether it's in the garden or with art, there is this kind of like almost meditative process where you can sort of get outside of your head and, um, uh, I don't know. I think it relieves anxiety. I think it's just, um, I think it's kind of healthy in general. Uh, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, it's interesting. I, it, it's funny that you mentioned that you were into gardening because I do see a lot of overlap with the gardening and the arts world for that reason. Yeah. 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 I think the other, only other formal training I've had is in the last couple of years. Um, my parents are both 91 and live in a, a senior community. So I kind of do the garden with my mom's dementia group. And then my dad has just uh, taken up painting in the last couple of years. So uh, I've joined in with his uh, painting class. So it's me and nine people, 85 and older. And uh, it's just been so enjoyable to learn a new process with your hands. And um, I'm very much an introvert. Work, but being in a room with you know eight other people it's kind of been a very cool experience to kind of be in your own world but kind of you know be connected with other people doing the same thing so it's been interesting to see how much I enjoy doing art on my own but then being part of a group mm -hmm. yeah I feel like sometimes it makes socializing and meeting people easier too because there's sort of this connect you know this connectivity about um the environment uh, mm -hmm. that that is sort of just different than you know maybe meeting people in in other uh, artificial environments, but um, yeah. yeah. So I've always I yeah, don't my, know I've always I've always enjoyed pe meeting people through those those right. worlds I guess. Mm -hmm. And my career world was very um, I, like I was head of uh, policy and analysis and uh, evaluation and compliance issues, so a lot of hard data stuff. Um, and you're you're evaluated on did you meet your budgetary and timeliness goals and how many people got to work in jobs with benefits so very um lots of room for creativity but also very measurable by data so it's kind of interesting to be in a class and get feedback about creativity it's kind of a new experience um you know, our teacher never says that's right or wrong, but um, helps ask questions like, so why did you make that decision? Or, um, you know, sometimes a teacher will say, and sometimes when I've been in a place like this, I've chosen to do it this way. So it's kind of giving you knowledge to think about and not be prepared for, uh, you didn't meet your quotas, you know. <laughs> so it's kind of, I, I've enjoyed that. It's still a little intimidating to have someone evaluate your creative work, but it's it's kind of a different experience. Definitely. Um, well, I think you touched on this earlier, but how did you first hear about Artomat and what drew you to the project? Yeah, so um, a couple ways. One was um, a friend in Florida also had a free little art gallery and she was engaged uh, in with Artomat. And and I saw what she did. I was like, well, yeah, maybe I'd be interested. She did a painting, which I'm not qualified to do yet. But um, so that was interesting. I also um, am part of a group called um, Make a Thing a Day in February. So oh. for the month of February, there are a thousand people from all over the world. And we each commit to making something every day. And it could be a sketch, it could be a pot of stew, it could be a new garden bed, um, but they, they really encouraged us to try new things. And so um, several people were involved with Artomat then. And I think I was intrigued because I liked the small scale of it. Um, the size of a cigarette pack is, I liked that uh, size and it seems doable um and it doesn't it's not too expensive of a enterprise uh so i like that um also i've never been paid for art and it doesn't sound like a lot but you get two dollars and fifty cents a piece and uh i i think that's kind of cool some people are like what whatever but 
I also think a lot of Artemat artists use this as a gateway, not only for a person to learn about a new piece of art, but to direct them to other mm -hmm. artistic endeavors they do. And right now I don't have that on board. I kind of, I'm happy with it, what it is, but that's always an option. Yeah, it's almost like a 3D business card or something like that. But, yeah, um, right. With a little sam a sampler pack or something. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of like that too, where it sort of gives you a flavor for the type of art that people are doing. And um, and and there's just so many varieties too in the Artomat. In most cases, you know, there's at least 20 or 30 different types that you can choose from. and And each person has their own unique style. Yeah, I like that they offer, you know, the, the machines are kind of like pack of cigarette arts, but you can also order a carton. I don't mm -hmm. know, my grandmother was a chain smoker, so she always had a big carton of cigarettes. But I read that one uh, family, that's their Christmas thing. So every year they order a carton of art and then divvy it up among uh, the family. So and that's real. That's kind of one thing I did when I got started is order that just to kind of get a feel for mm -hmm. what people are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it seems like it's a big variety, like paintings and little mini 3D sculptures or jewelry or, you know, yeah. uh, all Oregon sorts of different mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, paper yeah. arts, little notebooks, all kinds of stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, well, I think you've mentioned a few of the mediums that you've worked in, but um, yeah, what other types of mediums have you worked in? I know you've, you've done the sort of 3D sculptures for the televisions in our machine, but... Um, are there right. any others that you're sort of focused on? Um, I really like the clay art. So that's my priority. Um, I've done some origami stuff in the past. Um, so the other one I'm, so the TV has been fun because I started out just with TVs and then we did the tech TV series. Um, Arnamat actually, um, co-sponsors a film festival in North Carolina so they asked me could I do a movie theme tv so that was fun I did a uh, 40 tvs with all kinds of scenes from movies but also pictures of movies being made a director and for these tvs the image is the size of a dime so that's a real challenge to find uh, an image that reflects something that's the size of a dime so it's mm. kind of cool do you do um, any resizing of the images or do you just try to find images that are originally that size i'm pretty right now i kind of want to keep the image as i find it i don't go and print things off the internet i um scrounge around used bookstores and goodwill to find um magazines comic books um I haven't told my husband yet, but I've been cutting up his old biology textbook. Um, so yeah, hopefully he won't look at it. Uh, so, so. Um, the latest, uh, I don't know what you call it, art thing that I've been working on is, um, are you familiar with the Doll's Head Trail in Atlanta? Oh yes, I have been there before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my daughter lives in Rockdale County and she, they just bought a, uh, like a nine acre property and um, her mother-in-law and I are kind of creating a rural doll's head type trail. So we've been clearing a trail and just going around and finding everything that's on the property and um, making an art installation, big size. So it's kind of the opposite of the little art of Matt. It's um, giant size. So it's been a lot of fun. We're going to use a, using a metal detector and doing art with all the wire we found and putting together planters with old tires. So uh, that's been, that's been a lot of fun combining the garden and the art thing again. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And the, the found art type stuff. Um, it's always, I think, really fun to, to sort of just randomly come across things and try to use it in some creative way, um, which it sounds like you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So you've sort of talked about like the garden as a source of inspiration. Um, is there anything else that inspires you or do you have any favorite artists or other Artomat artists that you particularly like? I'm really envious of the painters. Um, so I'd like to see if I can move into that realm. That's kind of excites me. Um, one thing I've struggled with is 
um, is how much political type content I um, I want to put in my Artemat. Um, I did a lot of um, things about elections and voting on uh, a lot of the initial TVs. Um, I, I also am a poll worker, so that's really important to me. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, so I've been, um, that's a quandary for me is how um, mm. political I want to get because, you know, um, I, I, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. It's been pretty benign so far, but I think that's something I'm really thinking about. Um, well, I think one of the nice things about art in that respect is that it sort of does give you kind of a, a lot of um, latitude for expressing yourself in many ways. And, um, you know, regardless of what your political beliefs or various beliefs might be, you know, there's always that, that uh, sort of that, that canvas for expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, I can see where like, you know, you're, it's like, okay, how far do I go? But I guess that's part of the creative process um, in terms of, you know, what you want to put within your, your artwork. Right, right. Um, well, have you, do you have any favorite pieces that you've gotten out of the art machine that, um, that were made by other artists or ones that stand out to you? I know you said you, you came to ours and poked around and I guess we were almost sold out at the time you showed up, but um, hopefully we're restocked now, but. <laughs> um, gosh, there are some, uh, just some beautiful fired clay works. My clay is a uh, bakeable clay. So it's something I can do at home, but I've really loved some of the uh, smaller uh, fired clay pieces um, that I've gotten. Um, I got an origami mobile that I just love, and I just can't even imagine how they made it so tiny. Um, there's been um, beautiful notebooks, so the cover's clay, and uh, it opens up to a little diary book. It's just, I think I'm so impressed by the, how did they, what fastener did they use? How did they, you know, how did this paper work? What, um and become fascinated with glue, you know, and mm -hmm. um, all those substances about how long will this last? If someone has this for 10 years, um, you know, the packaging is very important in Aromat. They really, I really take time to have different um, uh, prints and paint and paper. Um, so I've just really become aware of the engineering of of the art which is 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 kind of fun yeah i think that's part of it i I've, I've that's something that's also intrigued me is is kind of the parameters they set on the project and how it's small so it makes it very um feasible and doable but then there's also these you have to take into account like the dimensions and the weight and other factors um and i sort of it's not like overly restrictive parameters but it's just enough that it kind of gives you gives you sort of a, a springboard for getting started which I really love mm -hmm. yeah um, and the the um, submitting a prototype process it's pretty uh, rigorous um, mm -hmm. so you submit a prototype and um, all the ones I've submitted I've gotten probably even for the teeny tiny thing like like five or 10 comments. Have you thought about this? You know, you have to change this. Um, packaging needs this or, wow, I really love how this works. Here's another tweak. And um, so it's it's been good to, it's a good learning experience. And some of their suggestions I've taken, some it's like, eh, no, I don't think so. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of an, an interesting um, sort of thread you know, I myself, I've never submitted anything to Artomat, but like for people who are, I guess, are interested in the project since you've gone through it several times. So is that sort of typical in that you submit it and then before they say yes or accept it, you get a lot of feedback and critique on it? You do, yeah. So you'll, um, you need to submit the item. You need to submit how the packaging will look. Um, they require a placard, which kind of describes it and the I guess where the cool and Winston cigarette tab was at a, a little 
piece for your art there. Um, they'll weigh it, they'll measure it. They, there are parameters like there can't be glitter or magnets or any edible items. Um, so, um, yeah, and they've, what the things I've submitted, they've, I've probably submitted six pieces so far, two of them I haven't put into production yet. Um, but they haven't rejected any. They've said, you know, change a few things. So it's a very welcoming process. And, um, you know, for someone trained in art, it might be easier than for us who don't typically do things. But I would totally give it a try, if um, even if you're not an artist. It's just so much fun and um, so rewarding. And it's interesting to do. It's kind of once you get approved, you have to make 50. So really thinking about, I've loved some things I've made prototypes of and have not submitted because doing 50 of those, it would be either too complicated, it would be too boring. Uh, it's like, ugh, I don't want to spend my life doing 50 or 100 or 400. So, <laughs> um, but I listen to a lot of uh, audio books and it's a great thing to I can go sit outside in the garden and put a table up and uh, and have fun doing it. So nice, nice. Um, no, that's yeah. That was that was kind of like what I wanted to wrap with was sort of what advice you'd give for people maybe wanting to participate in Art Nomad mm -hmm. or even just sort of getting started in in art. It sounds like you know you're involved in a lot of different artistic and creative endeavors, um, mm -hmm. and so. You know, we have a lot of, I guess, um, on a STEM school like Georgia Tech, we have a lot of students who maybe don't necessarily have uh, opportunities for artistic outlets all the time. So what might you, I guess, what advice mm -hmm. might you give to students who are sort of maybe not necessarily involved in it all the time for getting involved with those right. sorts of things? Um, I would, I'd say pick something you enjoy doing. You know, if you enjoy listening to music, I mean, think about how you might trans translate that into something physical. I've, I'm always, I've always been a fidgety person. So clay is just very soothing and it's something that's uh, helped me uh, relax and enjoy that. So that's kind of why I chose that. Um, I've always, um, been intrigued by my husband works construction and I've always been intrigued by tools and screws and I incorporated those into the TV. So if you're really into um, that kind of work or um, do that, the one piece I got from the Georgia Tech machine was a piece where a woman, I think in San Diego had gotten the uh, computer programming cards from Los Alamos. Mm -hmm. um, and I, when I went to Ohio State, one of my first classes in computer and oh, God forbid the seventies was, you know, programming this computer. I remember dropping a stack of those computer cards. So, you know, incorporating something about technology and art. I, I think people are fascinated by technology and um, putting math into art. I mean, it's just making those connections is, is very cool. And, um, just the idea of boy, people all over the United States, just, uh, you know, handling something you made is, is just, uh, intriguing. Absolutely. I, yeah, I love that sort of the way it's, it's just kind of dispersed all over the world. I, I've participated in some mail art type projects like that, where you're sending sort of letters to people you don't know, or letter art. And, um, uh, and it sort of has that same principle. I love the idea of the reach that, that, you know, you're reaching people that you wouldn't necessarily like meet or have um, natural connections with. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's such a cool concept. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, thank you so much. And this is, um, I appreciate you sort of taking the time to talk with me. Um, well, um, but I loved your, I bought one of your TVs, so I really loved your work. It was awesome. Good. Great. Good, good. Great. Well, thank you so much for sponsoring Machine. And uh, yeah, and I would love to see a series on the other artists. That'd be a lot of fun. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to, yeah, well, I'm kicking off with you and I'm hoping to like talk to some other folks and we'll have a maybe a little <laughs> series online. Um, and I think it might be a great way for people to connect too, who have participated. 
So um, that might be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Great. And I may hit you up for some gardening advice too. <laughs> All right, and I'll get some world, was it world coreopsis, was that it? No, world. Uh, yes, world sunflowers, which I think is in world that sun- same family. Uh, yeah, um, but it took, it, whew, it took over. I just had that one plant and now it's kind of built this whole little network underground and I've got- You must sunflowers. have a lot of, you must have sunshine, a lot of sunshine yep. or- yeah, I've got shade, shade, shade. So, yeah, but I may, shade I may hit you up for that. It <laughs> is. Yep, yep, yep. So, all, all right. right. Well, thanks so much. Thanks, Anne. Have a good uh-huh. one. All right. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.